today on Flywire, Sean Sullivan and I are going to talk about, uh, we're going to review the Lightspeed Tango headset, and we're going to talk about the, how it works, all the little features on it and all that stuff, and the good and the bad. And you'll see in the video who's pro and who's not so pro about the, uh, the Lightspeed. So stick with, on, stick with us on Flywire and learn about the Tango. Here we have uh, the Lightspeed Tango. It comes in a big hard case box uh, for, uh, for protection, I guess. This is, uh, you know, and they always say it takes two to tango. And, it's and got two. <laughs> it's got two. We have to have two to make this thing work. So this is the headset, and this is what's got all the, ion, uh, the active noise reduction computer stuff inside of it. And this is the part that connects to uh, the airplane and then Bluetooth or whatever it does to uh, uh, Wi-Fi is actually, I guess, to the uh, headset. So we turn it on with this little button right here, and then we can connect it Bluetooth to our telephone. We can talk on the telephone. That's pretty cool. And we charge it with this thing right here. And if, uh, uh, if the battery fails, because it's got a little lithium-ion battery in here, just like this unit has a lithium-ion battery, they're fortunately the same. Yep. Um, you can pull this out and then plug it into your headset, and then you're just a regular, just a wired headset. regular wired corded headset. So that works. And this is what uh, the GA plugs here. We hook it up into the airplane. The cool thing about this is this braided cord that uh, Lightspeed uses now, because I had a pair of Sierras for about eight years, and the cord literally they came the apart. Cord. Yeah, the rubber cord came apart, and it was gooey and brittle. One was brittle, one was gooey, and it was. Yeah. So eventually it destroyed. So actually what I did was I traded it in to Lightspeed and bought these. So they gave me a hefty uh, trade-in. That was That's a good thing. So you can strap it in. You can do all kinds of things. If you want to, you can get this thing with the uh, Limo plug like the Bose has. Mm -hmm. So you can hook it up into a Bose headset uh, plug, and that, that works, and then you get power. Otherwise, you need battery in this thing. So as far as that goes, the not having it tethered, with a cord to this and the rest of the airplane, that's one of the things that I really like about it uh, because you can move around and do whatever you want uh, and not feel like, ah, this thing's tugging me all the time. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is, is you get that with the battery and they don't last that long. I mean, they, so far, my experience is they last pretty well, but it's the hassle of recharging them all the time. Right, right. But, yeah. And, <clears throat> They but give it's you. a trade-off. It's you know like anything in aviation. Where, where are you going to go? And and when you first showed me these, the the thought of the wireless headset was just incredible. You know, especially with the Panther, because you know now I don't have to worry about the cords and everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean it's go wireless and charge, or plug it in and deal with your cords. Deal with your cords, and that's always gets me is you know I you know, start yanking myself all the time. And the battery is what seven hours. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. And is that what you're getting? Um, I don't know if I get quite that. Um, what I found is, is that if I leave it in the plane and I take it off, um, instead of turning it off, mm -hmm. you just let it, let it go. And it'll turn itself off pretty quick. And that's the most convenient thing. Right. Because if I have to turn it off, then, you know, it's, especially this one, it doesn't turn off easily. And it turns on real easily. Mm. So, <laughs> so you might turn it off and turn it back on real quick. Yeah, and it's got, it's got a, some mode where you hold it for three seconds or something. And I don't know, it's too confusing mm -hmm. for me. So um, anyway, that's kind of kind of that. Uh, it does come with uh, charging cords, and it comes with a little cube, you know, like an iPhone thing. Mm -hmm. So you can charge it, um, take it home to the hotel, or take it to the hotel, and when you land, where you're going to go, and plug it in because, especially after a long flight, you want to have yep. <laughs> power. Now you don't have your. Mine had a uh, metal clip. Yeah, I have so the metal clip. The clip kind of goes on the, you can hang it on your mat pocket yeah. or invert it either way. It was kind of kind of neat. They thought of, there's a lot of neat creature comforts. I, I noticed you don't have your colors on here. Well, um, or, or is this black? That's black. Okay. Yeah, and the reason is this black is, uh, see the. So it matches your headset. It matches the headset. Uh, let's see, where I think is it? the other side. Yeah, yeah right here. there. And the reason that that is because I bought one for my wife, and she's yellow. She's yellow. Okay, yeah. So now we can tell who's so who. It comes with what, like, four, I think six different colors. Yeah. And yeah. then they basically all match, so you can 
have, you know, I was all ready to go get all four of them, you know, and have all my different colors, but. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, get all four. And, well, I've got two. Yeah. So, yeah, this is mine. And uh, it also comes with a, a little doofer that uh, you can uh, plug into your phone. So then you can plug this into this unit here. And then I have an iPhone 10, so it kind of, I can, I bought this little uh, connector and that, I can plug it into the 10 and then I can use it. Uh, you can Bluetooth telephone calls, I've tried that, and that works. That works good. Or you can use this and it works really well. The cool thing about this though is uh, you can do FlightLink. Mm -hmm. And uh, FlightLink with your iPhone, it'll just record it. Right. And uh, record your conversation, the radio. You've got everything. You've got yeah. a, a, basically an audio history of the whole flight. Yeah, and it does a really good job mm -hmm. actually. It filters all the crap out. Cool. It takes it right off the intercom. So it does a really nice job of that. So let's see what else. Um, features on this thing, here's the, uh, here's the port. This is the thing I don't like about it. I'm gonna agree with you there. They yeah. could have done that a whole lot better. Yeah, well you know the GoPro 7 actually has got a, a plug sort of like this, but it doesn't have those little goofy uh, unidirectional ways that you put it in. You can mm -hmm. put it in uh, right. upside down, right side up, doesn't matter. But this one, I just, I had to put my glasses on to see what direction yeah. these well, things go, and I miss it all the time. Yeah, and, and if you force it, because that's what, it, it's a micro USB, yeah. I guess. If you force a micro USB the wrong way, it will go on, and it'll Damage. ruin the port. Yeah. And that's why I've had to replace my Stratus like three different times, because it yeah. had that micro USB, and it just, it's, it's awkward. Yeah, it is awkward. And I don't like the flap, you know. Yeah. It's, it, I noticed yours has got a lot more hours than what mine did, yeah. and yours is already curved up, which I figured that was going to happen. You know, maybe a little plastic door or something would have been. Yeah, probably would have been better. Just the port, mm -hmm. you know, just there so you could actually uh, not have this sticking out all the time. Yeah, I mean, it's not in a real dirty environment or anything, so yeah. you could probably just have the port open, which eventually it will be. <laughs> yeah, and that's how you turn it on is that button there. And, and this button over here is the whole big one, and you can supply them up and down. See, and I love that. Yeah. That it's easy to find, you know, it, and it's intuitive. Yeah. So for me, uh, let's see, I, f I fly with it mostly in the Bonanza and the A36, and it works out really well. And I, I like these better than Bose because my ear fits in here. Mm -hmm. I guess my ears are growing. <laughs> <laughs> but my ear fits in here better than Bose, and Bose and, and David Clark's just sit on top of my ear, and mm -hmm. it irritates me after a while. So, uh, but I've had pretty good, it works pretty good in the Bonanza. I tried it in the T34 the other day, and it was really noisy. Mm -hmm. I mean, even with the a &R, it just didn't quite catch up, because it's a, kind of a noisy airplane. But you bought one well, so on I my recommendation. One. Yeah, I saw yours, and... I was so, you know, of course, didn't try it or anything, but the, the wireless thing, I'm, I was, you know, loved the fact that it was wireless. I love the size of this because, uh, you know, in the Panther, this fits perfectly in a mat box. Yeah. And it's locked in there. And then I don't have to worry about any wires because I've got the headset on. And, and that's a problem in the Panther because you're moving around a lot. But so I bought it, got it all set up, charged up and everything. And uh, we went took the Piper up to do that mountain flying course. And of course, I didn't quite think about it. I should have brought a backup headset, but I was gonna use my new one. And not, you know, two minutes into the flight, I'm hearing this echo. And it's just, it sounded like I was in a tunnel. And basically what I think it is, uh, at least in, in my application was the side tone, the wireless time it took for the audio to go for, you know, from the headset to the, the box and then into the panel, it was echoing just a little bit. So I sounded like, the best way to explain it was a monster truck announcer. I mean, it's it exactly like a monster Sunday, truck. Sunday, it's Sunday, Sunday, wait, wait, wait. In fact, I, I was flying with Brett and I told him that, you know, like, <laughs> playing along with that. So, okay, it's something different. I can live with it, you know, we've got a, a three and a half hour flight up to New Mexico. It was, you know, got used to it, it wasn't bad. But in arriving up there, when I started to uh, descend and pull power back, I got this horrible screech. And I can't remember if it was in both ears. I think it was just uh, the, my right ear. 
and I mean the feedback was, I mean it was ear damaging, and uh, ah. I had to pull it off my ear real quick, and uh, you know I'm already you know kind of getting in the, the descending landing phase, so I'm not really worried about it. I've got it off my ear, and I'm finishing the flight that way. Well, fast forward to the next day, um, I chalk it up as you know who knows what, and uh, go flying again, and again when we start to pull power back and start to descend or whatever, it would do it again. And it was really loud. So, you know, expecting it this time, I started kind of playing with it. And I would, you know, I thought maybe it was something with the, the ANR and the pressure equalization or something. Pulled it off my ear and put it back on and it would kind of go away. And then it would come back. And But if I pushed the throttle all the way in, it went away. Really? So I have... No clue what it was doing. Well, it sounds to me like it must have been the computer as it's listening, because they have little microphones inside here, mm -hmm. you know, that listen to the ambient noise, and then it tries to figure out what that profile is and then generate an opposite wave. Well, so it's got little speakers and little mics. Like so it's probably messing that up. So I would hope that it was just the unit. I haven't had that experience. Maybe you need to borrow mine and, and try it and out. Try it, it out. try it out in my airplane, yeah. because, you know, it, and I thought maybe the monster truck thing was an audio panel issue, you know, between the, just the headset, the right. wireless, and the audio panel. Um, but the, the, the screeching, yeah, I need to try one of yours and see. Because, you know, as far as the comfort and the ease and, and even the recharging stuff doesn't bother me. Because, you know, when I'm flying across country, you know, I'm recharging iPads and all this stuff at night. So I always have my little plug station and I've got everything plugged in. And, and this is just one more thing, so it's no big deal. And as far as battery power, I had no problems on any of the, the flights that we did. So, uh, you know, as far as comfort and uh, quality and, and everything that comes with it, I loved it. Yeah. It was just that one thing. And, uh, you know, the, the big reason I upgraded other than the wireless was I've got the old Bose A320s right. that don't have Bluetooth. So if I want to listen to music, you know, I've got to, you know, plug my phone in and then there's one more cord to deal with. So after I ended up returning these, I upgraded to the blow, Bose Bluetooth, and, and you know I guess I'm a Bose guy. <laughs> so, but I would you hear that you hear that light speed. <laughs> you guys missed a sale on that one. I don't know how much many others you've had that yeah. happen to, but uh, you missed a sale. But uh, you know, and, and granted, in, in light speed's defense, I didn't call technical support, try to work through it, or send them back because I didn't want to do that. I bought years ago the. I think they were the David Clark X10s, the little small ones. Right. Nightmare headset. You know, I, I sent them back. I think I had them replaced two or three different times and finally just waited for my replacement to come back, didn't even open the box and sold them on eBay because they were just terrible. But uh, so I didn't want to go through the hassle of sending things back and getting, you know, replacements because, you know, I wanted my headset. So I ended up just going with the Bose. Yeah. Well, but, and I, I think that there's a lot of people that want to do just that too. They don't want to hassle. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lightspeed customer service uh, has been good to me in the past. I've had Lightspeeds for 10 years or so, and uh, they've been really good in the mm -hmm. past, but it's the hassle yeah. factor, because they don't give you one while you're down. Right, right. So, yeah. and, and, you know, from a business standpoint, I wouldn't expect that either, but uh, and I've always never heard anything bad about Lightspeeds. I mean, if people love Lightspeeds. Um, when the PFX, I think it was, came out, mm -hmm. it was kind of like this, you know, but not wireless. Um, I almost bought one of those years ago and, and ended up not doing it. But uh, when I saw this, it was like, you know, a wireless PFX. It's yeah, awesome. yeah, it was. So I'd like to give it another shot in, with your headset that we know works in your airplane to try it in my airplane and see, see yeah. if that same thing happens. Well, my wife likes it. She likes not having the cord oh, uh, gotcha. pulling on her head. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe you should try it. Maybe Melanie would like it. Uh, I've actually had a uh, light speed. I flew in the airline. It, it's a, a thing that a boom mic that would do like this, but it fit into your ear. Mm -hmm. you know, a little custom ear doofer and stick in your ear, and uh, it was great. Yeah. It was, really was, and uh, I liked it a lot. Because you could talk to somebody, you know, you put it in whatever seat you're sitting in, you know, you can talk to them ambient, and then, but you have your thing there yeah, all the that's time. Neat. Yeah, that's neat. It was easy to wear for really long periods of time. So anyway, this is the uh, Lightspeed Tango, and I give it a thumbs up. I like it. I use it all the time in the Bonanza. High noise environments, it doesn't do that great in. Uh, Sean, unfortunately, uh, he's had to give it kind of a, kind of yeah. 
I, I'm going to give it a thumbs up in hopes that I had a bad unit. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, if not, then, you know, it's, it's just, uh, I'm going to give it a sideways thumb. <laughs> sideways thumb. There you have it. So you can make your decision whether you want to try this one or not. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you next time on Flywire.